Mr. Traders and Intellectual Business Community, we continue our last segment on the discussion of how does the CEO network really work? And we are still keep exploring from Jan Fisterson, the Executive Director of Executive Global Network Singapore, on how this network gives values to the members and how, how does it work, really. Yeah, with uh, a membership fee, with the time uh, put in, and uh, what are the benefits that can be enjoyed by the members. Uh, Jan, we have uh, an audience who wants to ask the questions. Please, Pendra. Thank you. Jan, what are the factors which makes the Singapore CEO interest to join the Executive Global Network? Uh -huh. And then my second question, what about Indonesia? Are you planning to expand also in Indonesia? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So your question is, uh, what, what are the motivations uh, of the CEOs in S Singapore to join the EGN? Yeah. And whether those kind of motivations also existed in Indonesia? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I think you are thinking of uh, uh, the CEO of Indonesia might be somewhat different uh, psychologically than the CEOs in Singapore. Okay, Yan, do you have uh, the answer? Yeah, I, I have a very specific take on that. I think that when you are a CEO or a senior executive, you are a very, very lonesome person. Uh -huh. Basically, you are paid a reasonable amount of money uh, to make decisions. And uh, that's why you are there. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you could delegate the decisions that didn't need you, uh, so you have to make those decisions. And quite often, these are decisions which are not black and white. Uh, so they're difficult. And who do you discuss them with? Mm -hmm. If you have a problem with your CFO, you can't discuss that with the CFO. Mm -hmm. You can't discuss it with maybe some of the other colleagues. And maybe you don't want to talk to your chairman about it because mm -hmm. he has paid you to make the decision. So you sit there and say, what is the right decision? Should I seek a new CEO? Should I counsel him? Or what should I do? And that's where you can use your group to say, I got this situation. What do you think? Um, for example, we have this example from Australia, a CEO in Australia who was employed as managing director in a company and the, the former managing director stayed in the company in a different position um, and the company was highly unprofitable. So this new MD had to turn around the business, but he didn't feel there was anybody inside the company he could discuss All right. and challenge and say, come with different ideas. So he used his network group for that. Uh -huh. I think it's very interesting if you look again at our research which we did that, that half of the members that we asked, half of the members we asked stated that their business, uh, the importance of the network of EDN uh, had a 10 to 30 percent importance to the business. That's quite a high number, the 10 to 30 percent of how they run the business or, or the importance of the business mm -hmm. is related to the EDN membership. Um, there were a number of members who uh, said it's too early to say and, and we have quite a number of the respondents who had been members of less than a year and it does take a little bit of time to get in. All right. But the bottom line is the members get real benefits from this membership. So again if you can improve the performance of Oracle in Singapore, is that worth four and a half thousand uh dollars? -huh. I think that's the question you need to answer. Yeah. Um, and for Frank Ku it clearly was. So the, the, the CEO members of Singapore uh, consider that there are times when they have to make decisions and nobody to talk with. Yes. Yeah, maybe they can they can say prayer, but uh, then uh, okay. they need so also people to talk with. Uh, and then they they know, but uh, they need to make uh, good decisions and they utilize other people. They need to meet other people with the same levels of expertise and then uh, people worth to exchange idea with and then they can make better decisions. People they can trust. People they because can trust. you will never go and talk about a serious problem in your company yes. to somebody you don't trust. Usually the people you talk to about your serious problems, uh -huh. that's your bankers. And those are not the people you want advice from. Yes. Right. So but, <coughs> but then uh, those people are those people who has the idea of they need to learn from other people. Yeah. And then maybe other people can, you know, can give us uh, idea or opinions that are good for, for me. Yes. But uh, also, if I observe many of the CEOs in Indonesia, they think they know the most. You know, and uh, they think other people who, 
who, who like to try to give them ideas knows nothing about uh, the industry or knows nothing about these challenges and uh, there are quite many CEOs with this kind of you know framework of uh, attitude do you think that uh, Indonesian uh, CEOs somehow has the same level of eagerness to learn from others uh, same with uh, in Singapore I think you'll always have a number of people who are fairly close-minded and you can't do anything about that. The members who tend to come into EDN are the ones with an open mind. All right. Those are the ones who know they don't know everything. All right. And those are the ones you want to get hold of because uh -huh. those are the ones who are prepared to share with you. Uh -huh. um, I don't see why Indonesia should be any different from Singapore. In Singapore, half our members are Singaporean, Sing large Singapore companies, small Singapore companies. Mm -hmm. Um, so quite a number of these members have decided this is of value to me. I think a, a cultural thing in, in many Asian countries is that people don't like to stand up in a crowd and ask questions. Right. Uh, they're quite a little bit hesitant, they want to stand back, and maybe more so in Asia than in Europe. Uh -huh. um, but the people coming into the network are the ones who say, I don't mind to stand out, I don't mind to ask questions. Or the other ones to say, I don't mind to do it if I know the people around me. Right. But I don't want to do it in a public place. And this is where EDN can actually help these people to ask the questions they need to ask. All right. So uh, regarding this, uh, Ian, there are also people or CEOs or candidates of members saying that, well, if this is uh, the way it is, then why should I join a managed network which I have to pay certain fees? Mm -hmm. I can just invite my friends and make such a group. Yeah. I mean, the, what's the difference? I mean, the, do you think that uh, and the, why this managed group uh, costs you, and then the, do, can they make uh, their own, you know, kind of network with the same quality? A lot of people make informal networks, and usually it's a very good meeting the first time. A second time, okay meeting. Third time, tend not to happen because somebody forgot to call and organize it. So, so what we think is, is, is important is that it is, has a structure. There's got to be somebody that is responsible for making things happen. You know that you don't need to worry about the next meeting. You know you will get your invitation in good time. You know there will be a speaker. Right. You know where it's organized. So you don't need to do that yourself. You yeah. just basically need to turn up and participate. And, and therefore, the meetings happen. Um, so there are many informal networks, um, being a member of a golf club is also yeah. a kind of network. But again there, when you stand on the first tee Saturday morning to tee off, you don't say to your, to your golfing partners, by the way, I have a cash flow problem, uh -huh. what should I do? Uh -huh. You don't do that there. So, so informal networks tend to be more with friends, mm -hmm. and you don't always want to expose your problems to your friends. I see. So you, you mean that uh, if we try to form this kind of network, not uh, a managed one, usually after one or second times then it will dissolve while the trust itself needs to build he said that uh, we need to build trust at least through two three times right so before the trust was built the network has already dissolved yeah. and uh, you know then uh, that's why this this uh, managed network offer the values that uh, they can build the consistency and the quality of uh, managing this network i mean it takes a a significant amount of time and effort mm -hmm. to uh -huh. organize this and, and business people have their own business to run uh -huh. they have to be experts in their own business so they seldom also have the time to organize the formal networks so uh, last question Jan when you said that uh, you're going to, uh, you're, you're going to open the EGN in Indonesia right? correct yes and uh, you will uh, also partner with the uh, intellectual business community right? yes so uh, how do you extend the message that uh, the cost of entrance worth the network? Well, we have a, we have a, a clear philosophy in EGN that is that we understand that our product is a little bit difficult to understand before you tried it. All right. Uh, but on the other hand, we don't have trial memberships. We want people to commit. So you become a member, you pay your, uh, your fee, but if within six months we are not able to make the membership worth your while, you can ask for your money back and we will pay your money back. Okay. So it gives you six months to try it out 
and to meet the other members and see whether this is something you really want to do. We have the same policy worldwide. It's the same in Denmark. It's the same in Singapore. So it's not unique to Indonesia. Okay. And we have that policy because number one, we don't want to have unhappy members in the groups. Right. That 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 ruins the group dynamic. Um, and on the other hand, we know that it happens very very seldom that people withdraw. Okay. So you, well, what you say is that the, the worth of the network itself. Uh, varies one to another and then when you are already entered the network then you can really justify whether it is worth or not and if, it, if you find that it's not worth your money then uh, you can pull out right within six months yes. within six months yes, okay yeah, good enough fair enough okay uh, yeah, and because of the time then we have to conclude our discussion so <coughs> this time we talk about network again uh, too many people or too many organizations offering networks and uh, you find networks everywhere in your uh, uh, surroundings not only uh, former network your ex-school networks or whatever networks you can have and every time you want to join a, a network or activity of a network for me number one constraint is my time does it worth my time or not can I uh, what what do I w look for in this network so that's why in this time of abundance of network, even though we know network is important, we need to select which network that we want to be in. And uh, as we know, network can be beneficial for you if you have a coherent network, you have a, a, a close network that uh, you know that there is trust inside uh, members. And to build trust is not easy. You have to build trust needs time needs commitment and uh, well of course it takes your investment not only time then also money and other resources so by talking with uh, Jan the executive director of executive global network which has uh, more than 5,000 members and uh, operating in nine countries I think uh, there's something that we can learn from of uh, what the particular uh, network can benefit the members and what kind of members fit in into the, the this, this kind of networks while you know the entrance fee is not is not uh, quite low but uh, with that high uh, entrance fee people still join in it means that the network itself gives something that the people uh, join in not only join in but we, we see they continue to the second year and the third year it means that uh, you know the dropout is not really high so uh, the uh, conclusion is that uh, uh, you ha we have to, to, to select our network uh, and to build trust in the network and then uh, when it's talking about uh, worth of the network then you have to experience it but before you dis decide whether the network is worth of for you or not then you have to see it in the trust period so before you go into the third meeting the fourth meeting then you should not decide because at a time the the trust that is needed to build the network to give you the benefits might not yet be formed yet so i think it's uh, fair enough to give six months let's say three times of meetings so people to 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 see whether let's say like each network worth or not and uh, we'll see also that uh, uh, many not managed network usually doesn't run well because of commitment side yeah, and organization uh, side okay uh, and uh, in, in Indonesia I think uh, for you who wants to join uh, this kind of network yeah the executive global network which is based in Singapore yeah? yes and I think uh, this in, in Jakarta we start with the CEO group first right we start first with this so we invite group. CEOs who wants to join to the this uh, uh, network close network and intimate network uh, you can uh, email to us to ibc.harvard at yahoo.com and we will invite you to have a preview and then to, uh, yeah let's see how how you fit into this network because uh, we also require some levels of uh, uh, you know some levels of requirements uh, to make the the group is uh, consistent and uh, at the same level yeah mm -hmm. otherwise the work will not run quite right. well okay uh, Jan, thanks very much for your time coming from Singapore Thank down to Jakarta to have this uh, TV show. 
and uh, hope your EGN will develop very well in Indonesia. Thank you very much. Appreciate we it. We gave applause to you.